Today, we're going to talk about eight takeaways from the Olympic marathons that we can apply to our own running journey. Hey runners and welcome to my channel. My name is Letty. I produce running content on a weekly basis. I invite you to look at all my other videos, but let's hop into today's video. All right, so number one takeaway from the Olympic marathon is that consistency breeds success. Our efforts will eventually turn into long lasting results. A prime example of this is runner Benson Kipruto, a name that didn't really sound familiar to many runners in the United States until very recently. However, it's been a long time coming. Benson Kipruto has been a rising star since 2016 when he won the Toronto Waterfront Marathon. In 2021, he ended up winning Prague and Boston. However, his winning times at that time were not as fast as many marathoners these days. He came in at a 2.10 in Prague and a 2.09 in Boston. However, he continued training and improved by 2022. He placed third in Boston, but his time had improved by two minutes. He ran a 207 and he also won Chicago, running a 204. By 2023, he again had continued his effort and his training and he placed again third in Boston and this time second in Chicago. His times again had improved. He ran a 206 in Boston and a 204 in Chicago. He had come in second right after winner Calvin Kipton. Benson Kipruto continued his effort and by 2024 this year, he ended up winning Tokyo with a blasting fast time of 202. So what does that teach us runners? If we continue running and put our effort into our runs and stay consistent over the years, our bodies will improve, hopefully, and we will be faster. So just keep doing what you're doing, stay consistent. All right, so with that, moving on to lesson number two, tailor your approach to training. No two marathons are the same and we should never treat them like that. The only thing that is the same is the distance. Some marathons are hilly, some of them are flat, some of them, like the Olympic marathon, are super hilly. So prime examples of people who have done this right are Connor Mance and Clayton Young. Those two runners were there to represent the United States. And if you closely look at their time, you can see that neither one of their PRs were very far off from the Olympic marathon times that they ran, which is hugely significant because both of their PRs and Olympic trial qualifiers were set in Chicago. Now, if you know about Chicago and the marathon, Chicago is super flat and the marathon is super fast. Last year in 2023, I was there, I ran the marathon too. The weather was absolutely perfect and it was ideal conditions for PRing. So the fact that Connor Mons and Clayton Young ran their times in Paris not very far off, I think it was just a little bit around a minute from their PRs in Chicago, is hugely significant and can be directly attributed to their training. Now, I'm not a stalker, but I do follow Clayton Young on Strava and Instagram, same with Connor Mons. And we can see that these two runners come from Provo, Utah, where they live at a very high elevation. And most of the training was done there, as well as in Springville, which also is at high altitude. Clayton Young has also started a YouTube channel where he allowed us lay runners to follow him and witness his training. And we can see how much hill training they both had implemented into their training. In addition to that, Clayton Young also has a strength running coach who we also follow on Instagram. And we've seen how much strength training he did in preparation of this marathon. So to come back full circle, make sure that if you want to PR or get close to your PR in a marathon, you look at the course and you train accordingly. Takeaway number three from this Olympic marathon is to believe in yourself. Self-belief is super critical and confidence in your abilities is the cornerstone for overcoming any challenges in life and that same goes to running. Just take a look at Ethiopian runner Tamara Tola, who was the unexpected replacement for Sese Lema, who was injured and could not partake in this Olympic marathon. He hadn't even been selected by the country of Ethiopia to run this marathon until 15 days prior to the race. He obviously had been training all along, and when he stepped in, he came in confidently. He led the elite pack almost the entire race and ended up winning gold. Another example of this is Hassan Sifan. She runs for the Netherlands and she was at a time prior to the race unsure which distances she would run because she qualified for all of them. 
She was undecided for a while, and when pressed by reporters, she told them that she needed to chill and relax and make her decision when it was the right time for her. She ended up running the 5,000 meters, 10,000 meters, and the marathon. A lot of people did not think that she could run a marathon at a fast pace after getting bronze medals for the 5K and the 10K. In the end, she ended up winning the Olympic marathon because she gave it that final push. It was quite amazing to see her succeed. Last but not least, Dakota Lindworm. On her Instagram, she tells us her story on how she was a D2 walk-on. She ran, came in first American, placing number 12. Her PR wasn't off very far from her winning time. Her PR is a 225, and that was on a flat, almost little bit of a downhill course, Grandma's Marathon. The Olympic Marathon was nothing like that. It was super hilly, and she ran a 226 on that. So take away from all of this, believe in yourself, even if others don't, and you'll see where you can go in life. Number four takeaway from this Olympic marathon is to invest your effort and reap the reward. Dedication is what leads to personal fulfillment. The prime example of this is American runner Emily Sisson. Emily Sisson did not run the race that she wanted to, but according to her Instagram, she quotes that the essential thing is not to have conquered, but to have fought well. And with this quote, Emily focuses on giving your best effort, regardless whether or not you're in peak performance condition or if you're balancing other things in life. Because by dedicating yourself to your current stage, taking pride in your work, you will avoid the regret of not giving it your all and you can still feel accomplished no matter how your performance goes. So whether you are in the best shape for your marathon or if other things happen, family, life, work, do your best with what you have and then you'll feel satisfied because you know that you've given it your all. Now lesson number five is something that all of the runners, obviously the Olympians did, and that is to focus on the things that you can control. You didn't hear a single runner complaining about the weather or the course, because that's something that is out of their control. They just did the training. And so by concentrating on the preparation of your race, you kind of change your mindset by getting all that negativity out and you maximize the chances that you are gonna actually do better because you are focusing on the things that you can control. So whether all of us are worried about how the weather is gonna be in Chicago or Boston, instead, let's just not think about that. Obviously, prepare for it by bringing the attire that you might need to wear if the marathon is in rainy conditions or is in hot conditions. So I'm not saying don't do that, but do focus on your training more because in the end, the training is what is gonna pull you through. Everybody's gonna have to deal with, including the weather. Key takeaway number six of the Olympic marathon is that one race does not define you. Your journey as a marathoner, the person who you are, that does define you, but not one single race. Prime example for this is our GOAT, Elliot Kipchoge. Elliot Kipchoge still is the GOAT. He's so much faster than so many people. However, the last couple of years have been rough for him, and we don't know if his decision to drop out was because he's not physically there anymore due to aging, or if he really had an injury. In the end, all that doesn't matter. We know how well he did perform at the prime of his life, and that is what's gonna go down in history with him. So what does all of this mean for us, the lay runners? What it means is kind of the same as for Elliot Kipchoge. We can have a bad race too. It also means that our journey getting to where we are is what defines us. How we've handled pressure in the past, how we've dealt with personal conflict, work conflict, and we're still able to run. That's what defines us as runners. It's like always the journey that matters. Now on to takeaway number seven from the Olympic marathon, be present. There's a saying by Eleanor Roosevelt and it goes something like, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift. That's why we call it present. I absolutely love that quote just because it's the truest thing you'll ever hear. Yesterday is in the past, we can't change it. The future hasn't happened yet and nobody knows what's gonna happen, right? Unfortunate things can happen, but being present is the way of living life. Marathoner Clayton Young clearly did that during the Olympic marathon. You can see him running down the chute of the finish line, huge smile on his face, even though he must have been exhausted and just celebrating the moment, probably trying to engrave it in his memory so he can relive it over and over. Same with Connor Mons. Connor Mons on his Strava post 
stated that he could not reach his A goal in the race, so he took a step back to appreciate the journey as he quote unquote decided to keep the pace and enjoy the journey. All of us could do that a lot more, right? We always think about the goal, the big goal that we have in mind, but we should probably savor our training a little bit more than we do. Now on to final takeaway number eight of this Olympic marathon is to practice gratitude. And you can see that every single one of these athletes do it, whether they are believers and thank God when they cross the finish line or they are more verbal about it in their posts, thanking their families and their supporters. It's something that we always have to keep in mind. None of us get to where we get in life by ourselves or hardly, right? There's always someone there for us, whether it is a person that is watching the kids, allowing us to do our runs, or our friends that are willing to run miles with us even though they have something completely different on their training plan. Whether it is encouraging text messages, phone calls, your coach, whatever it is, Make sure that you are always thankful and show your gratefulness to the people supporting us because in the end, how awesome is it that we get to run marathons in huge cities, have spectators there 10 feet deep like the New York marathons that are cheering us on when they very well could be avoiding whatever weather the marathon is in and just do something else, right? With that, I wanna tell every one of you, thank you if you've made it to the end of this video. Like I said, there's more for you guys, so be sure to subscribe. And until next time, have a great week of running.